Welcome to Fix It for Josh's Sake. Today I want to work on this 1972 Arctic Cat Lynx. I started it this last weekend and noticed there was a lot of dirt and dust and what looks like a mouse nest coming out from the the fan area on this motorcycle or the snowmobile engine. So I need to take that off and clean it all up and put it back on so I don't have dirt blowing all over underneath this hood. Come on with me as we fix it for Josh's sake. Let's get a closer look at this uh, Kawasaki 292 made for the Articat Lynx. Uh, it has a, two bolts here that are half inch. It has a bolt here that's half inch. It has a bolt that's under here that's half inch. And it's got these two that are half inch. Now for taking this fan shroud off, those six bolts are going to come out. And then that will slip off and we'll be able to uh, start working on getting this shroud off. But before I even go there, I do want to mention, if you do have your coil, uh, your recoil for your pull start, never break, uh, this is pretty nice. You just got a half inch bolt on each corner of your recoil and you take that off and you can get in here. And I don't know, a lot of times the rope breaks, sometimes the recoil assembly breaks, but it's pretty easy access if you do need to do a repair on this recoil. It is doable, so don't be too daunted by that. One thing that I like to do when I'm working on bolts like this, I have no idea how long they've been in here, and it's an aluminum case back here that they're they're bolting into. So I always uh, grab myself some penetrating oil. It doesn't matter what brand. It can be WD-40, can be Deep Creep. Uh, anything's going to work, but all we're trying to do is get a little lubrication down into the threads here because there is a chance that with the heat and cool and heat and cool of this motor running, that uh, those bolts could be kind of tight. So I always spray a little bit of penetrating oil in on these bolts before I start my project because the last thing I want to do is have to go in with an extractor or a reverse thread extractor and pull out a bolt I shear off in order to finish my project. So take that as a little uh, advice on a project like this. All right, that penetrating oil has been uh, over there soaking in for about five minutes now. I'm going to grab my half inch ratchet here and I'm going to start working on breaking these loose. And sometimes, hey, they go pretty easy. This is the way you want a project to go, right? When you got your uh, bolts ready to pull out, go ahead and grab yourself some sort of a container and uh, throw it down in the bottom of the belly pan here. And let's go ahead and pull all these bolts out, drop them in there, because uh, I can't tell you how many times I started cleaning underneath of a tunnel in between the bulkhead and found just, I mean, probably a oatmeal bowl full of bolts and washers and, and screws. Uh, so just go ahead and do yourself a favor and throw them in a container right away. There's always got to be one, and today it's this guy right here. Uh, you're going to have to go ahead and get yourself a, a open-end box end wrench and use that to get at the one way in the bottom, right at the front of the bulkhead there. Once the bolts are out, it's pretty much as easy as just grabbing this lip at the top and just pulling, and this unit just falls right away. Are you ready for this? It's the moment of truth. Uh, oh my God, are you seeing that? This is the shit. Oof. I'm gonna go get some gloves. I am sure you wanted a closer look at this garbage. Oh my god. Well, it's pretty gross. This is definitely a mouse nest. And, uh, wow, they were busy. Look at that. Okay. Well, glad I'm trusting my instinct and in cracking that open. We are going to do a, oh my gosh, there's so much in there. We're going to do a deep clean on this thing. Get that all unpacked. Oof, this cover needs some love too. Well, nothing like getting to the root of the problem. This is all the evidence of that mouse nest inside of there, and I'm guessing, with deductive reasoning, that's a bunch of mouse piss that's caused this shroud to rust. So in a little bit, I'm going to do a real deep scrub down on this and put some new primer and paint on it because I just want to seal that up good. 
And while we got to most of the problem, uh, I still see there's a lot of crap inside of these cooling fins. So our next step needs to be to pull off these two half inch bolts. And then there's a couple of flatheads here. And also there's a couple back here. Definitely the top one needs to come off. You can do the second one. It'll fall forward over top of your header. Uh, and there's another screw Woo, all the way over top. Actually, there's two of them right here. Those need to come out as well. And then everything will open up and we can clean out all the garbage in these cooling fins. When you're working on taking out these flatheads, don't just grab any little screwdriver you got laying around. Get something that's substantially wide but has a narrow grab because at the end of the day, this screwdriver uh, will grip a lot better if it fills the entire slot and gets all the way down in. That slot is actually kind of narrow for uh, a flathead screw that big. So keep that in mind. Remember when I was talking about uh, some of these screws getting hot and seizing in? These two back here are really tight. So what I need to do is go get myself a vice grip and I put it on the screwdriver shaft so I have double leverage and that way I don't round out the slots on these flathead screws. All right, now that we got all the screws and bolts out of this shroud, we can just grab it here and pick it up and see what kind of grime we got here. That's looking a lot better than the other shroud, but oh yeah, mm -hmm. we got some stuff to clean up here, don't we? I'm going to work on pulling this one off now. Well, let's come around to this side as we drop down this shroud and we can kind of see some of the garbage here that we're going to clean out. It's all over in there. I think we even might have a combination of mice and possibly some mud hornets because uh, it looks to me like there's stuff wedged in between the cooling fins as well that is more like dirt than just, you know, fur and seeds. I know we're all pretty sick of masks, but in this situation, I'm going to mask up because uh, we're going to go ahead and dive into that and you do not want to breathe this kind of garbage into your lungs, trust me. I consider this a couple stage process. First I'm going to go at it with my vacuum cleaner and I'm going to try to get everything loose that I can around there because uh, I don't want to make this stuff airborne if I can help it. But some of it will not break loose with the vacuum cleaner. So then you got to grab your air compressor and get an air nozzle in there and blast around and get it loose, but please just be careful and uh, don't get this crap in your eyes or lungs. Well, that wasn't very fun, but got a lot of stuff out of there. Now I'm gonna come at it with uh, some sort of a cleaner or penetrating oil, I haven't decided yet, but the idea is I wanna clean this up right down to the aluminum so we don't have all this oxidization uh, caked up on here. I want to see raw metal. After consulting the old interwebs, I decided to concoct a uh, half part white vinegar and half part hot water spray here. And I am going to go ahead and just blast that all over this motor. I'm going to let that soak in really good. Rumor has it, this uh, concoction is really great for knocking out uh, oxidization on aluminum. So I'm going to soak this up really good, let it sit for a while, and then I'll come back at it with a wire brush and a screwdriver and maybe my six and one to get down into those slots and get this cleaned up really good before I blow air on it again. Well, I tried the white vinegar method and scraped around on it. And to be honest with you, like where it's drying there, it's still white, crusty oxidization on there. So uh, I don't know that I really think that this vinegar deal is that much of a... I'm not buying into it. I'm going to grab my <laughs> my bottle of 505 that I talk about uh, finding good results with. Spray it down, scrape around some more, scrub around some more, and see if I get a little better result. Well, I scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed and rubbed and scraped on this thing. And uh, I'm going to say that Rat piss is really freaking hard on aluminum because no matter what I do, I can't seem to get this white residue off 
I've used white vinegar, I've used 505, and then I went back over it with white vinegar again because, like I've said in my previous videos, you do not want to leave that 505 sitting on aluminum. It uh, That also, in time, will cause some corrosion to build up. So this has all been rinsed back down with water and white vinegar, and now, and then I blew it all off really well with my air compressor nozzle. I think I'm going to spray a little penetrating oil on it just to help impregnate this dry, crusty aluminum with some a little bit of oil. I don't know if that's the right thing to do, but it's kind of what makes sense to me. All right, I've had about enough of that. Uh, I did use the penetrating oil, scrubbed around on it, and you can pretty clearly see that we're now down to nice, clean aluminum. And I didn't do anything different between the vinegar the 505 and the penetrating oil but apparently the penetrating oil breaks apart that oxidization a little better and now we have some nice clean silver fins here i feel like this engine would run cooler now in this state next part of the pro project i'm going to tackle here is i'm going to scrub all that rust down and get it to metal and then i'm going to proceed to uh, put some primer on it I'm going to use a, a Rust-Oleum rust inhibitor and then uh, start considering what I'm going to do with the front side. I scrubbed and scrubbed with uh, a stainless brush and a scraper and a rag and cleaned it up pretty good. Uh, it's down now to pretty much the metal. There is some rust kind of exposed there a little bit, but it's pretty much down to metal. And so now I'm going to go ahead and grab myself some alcohol here. And wipe it down really good and then next I'm going to use some rust reformer pretty happy with this stuff rust reformer does a good job of uh, kind of etching into the rusty areas on metal and helping to keep that rust at bay for a little while obviously rust is a cancer that's kind of unstoppable but uh, I found that that rust reformer does a pretty great job of helping me out well, I got myself uh, all taped off here on all the screw holes and also the fan air holes. I want to show you how I do this, though. On all my taped-on points, I always roll my tape like that so that you have a little tab that sticks up that uh, is not sticky so that when I need to, I can easily grab onto this and peel it off. There's nothing like uh, trying to get some tape off that... You can't get at and you got to go get a razor blade or something now when it comes to masking a logo like this right here says already cat uh, that I leave right down solid to the sticker but when it comes to sections that you can pull off easy leave yourself a little tab to pull up it makes life a lot easier you might be asking yourself why in the world I masked the back side of these holes but I have found that paint is like water and if there is a crack, it will seep through it and leave sort of a, uh, a fine mist of overspray. So I just went ahead and taped all the holes so that when I spray in here, nothing's getting on the back side and causing problems over here. Probably over uh, doing it, but I don't know. It's the best I know how to do, and I'm going to do the best I can. Now that I've got this rust reformer all uh, shook up, I'm going to go ahead and give this a coat. All right, we'll let that dry for a little bit and give it another coat. I'm just spraying a fresh coat of silver on this fan shroud and recoil. And I, I just want to bring to light, I'm pretty sure it's a law, like the law of gravity, 
Murphy's Law. Uh, this law would be that if there is a fly in the neighborhood, when you're spray painting something, that fly has to come and see what you're doing. And they can't just like fly by. They gotta fucking sit right in the paint and uh, just go ahead and become a carcass, like a fossil in your paint project. I mean, this looks pretty great. And I guess this guy, he's gonna learn how to snowmobile real fast. Just did a rinse and repeat on this, scrubbed it down with wire brushes and rags, and then wiped it down with alcohol taped off the badge and now I'm gonna paint this one as well I got two coats of paint on there got the first coat on there that's gonna be drying a little bit got these bolts and screws drying I'm gonna rotate those and paint the other side about the same time I put a second coat on there we're doing good looking forward to bolting this stuff back on to that 292 Kawasaki motor now, I think this goes without saying. I'm not a professional body paint guy. I'm out here just trying to clean up a sled and make it look good. But I will tell you this. When you mask off a sticker or something like that, don't let this dry. Uh, peel this off when the paint's still wet because otherwise when you get a hard edge of dry paint, it sometimes will peel back uh, the area that you just painted and that's really frustrating so take the time right after you get probably 20 minutes after you get your coat on a fresh paint and peel off your tape and you'll be real happy with the situation there now that I got the fran fan shrouds say that five times fast fan shrouds painted uh, we're gonna go ahead and bolt them on the snowmobile it'll be the same only different the two back screws here are five millimeter and they bolt in there. I'm gonna hit those up first. When you're putting these screws in, don't over tighten them. Uh, wait until you get this other screw back here in because you need those three to have a little forgiveness as you tighten them up. Remember to use that same principle uh, from this screw over to this screw because that's quite a stretch and uh, it can be pretty tough, so leave these loose, get them both started, and then from there, you should be able to uh, snug them up after you have all your screws in. Once you got your screws tight, you can go ahead and tighten up your bolts here and snug those down. The next thing we'll do is put the fan shroud on. As you're putting this on, make sure the recoil also grabs and engages and turns the clutch because if you don't have this lined up right, or if the cogs aren't sitting up good in there, uh, you might be taking it off and fixing something. So just double check that before you start putting the bolts in. Another thing I want to point out is that these screws should all go in pretty easy by hand. That's a nice aluminum housing back here. And uh, if they don't, there is a chance you might have them cross threaded or something or some binding between the fan shroud and the the threads on the bolts. So uh, double check if they're binding up and you're having problems, it might not be that the threads are gnarled. It might be that there's something else wrong. So keep that in mind. Well, there you have it. That fan shroud is now nice and clean inside. Uh, there kind of went through the whole process with you. Hope you enjoyed it. I know I enjoyed working on this. Uh, thanks for following along as uh, I fix this for Josh's sake. If you did enjoy yourself, feel free to subscribe, like, and share. It'll help other people find this video and maybe solve the problem of a rat's nest in their little snowmobile. Thank you. Have a great day. Oh, yeah. And one last thing. Don't forget to put your spark plug little bracket here on this screw. I don't know why I have to tell you that, but it's got to be done. All right. Have a great day. Thanks for joining along as we fix it for Josh's sake.